said we're giving God our undivided attention. He is worthy of our undivided attention. you to tune into something they say pay attention there's something that real good that they want you to tune into they say pay attention and the Bible says that with everything that God created the heavens and the earth what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou would visit him Jesus paid the ultimate price of attention no one's ever paid attention like him his mind was so filled with us that he came down to die for each and every one of us. And if he did that, that he might turn his attention to me, how much more should I present my body as a living sacrifice? Come on, can you just give him a hand clap of praise one more time? said, hey, we apologize in advance. Uh, you're probably not going to have air conditioning or heat. Well, thankfully, we have that. That's okay. Amen. And the weatherman said, it's supposed to be like, you know, bring out your snow boots. Come on, sir. And I don't know about you, but it, it wasn't too cold out there. You know? And, uh, and then the monitor had a nice logo ready. Come on, somebody. Amen. Had a nice title slide. The monitor said, uh-uh, I rebuked that name. <laughs> so, just a beautiful black screen today. Just, just, just admire this. This is, this is all a part of the plan. I'm kidding. Totally kidding. Uh, but it's so good to be in the house of God with each and every one of you. And I feel like we're setting a tone. I feel like we're setting an atmosphere uh, of worship. Um, uh, today, the kids are going to uh, be in service, uh, age of, ages 4 to 10. You're going to be in service with us today. Uh, we have a gift for you, for those. Now, if I see any 25-year-olds sneaking up to come get a gift, I, mean, I will know. I will use my discernment and see that you are not 10 years old. Amen. Uh, ages 4 to 10. Uh, we're going to have a, a gift for you uh, before you leave today. Uh, this is the fifth Sunday, and we wanted to make sure we took time to uh, uh, meet with you. I haven't got a chance to meet all the all the kids yet, and would love to meet you. Uh, I want to go into worship uh, one more time before we get into uh, offering. And uh, could you lead us in worship? decided to follow Jesus and that no matter who we are or no matter where we are that everything that we have is God's amen, amen. and that everything that I have Jesus including my doubts my fears my aspirations everything the things the good things and the bad they're yours my God I give myself to you completely all that I am and let that be your prayer today this morning that everything the way you walked in here, all of your baggage that you give it to God, amen? It's yours. All of it is yours.
we just normally uh, go into offering. But I got a word in my spirit today. And I don't think I can wait another three minutes. The devil's in trouble, y'all. Hallelujah. service. We're going to have gifts uh, for the kids um, ages four, 4 to 10. Um, also, after the service, uh, if you can stop by and just uh, drop your tithing offering into this uh, offering box before you leave. Uh, we would normally take it up now, but oh, I got a heavy burden on me today. for your family. And I pray that God would help us. And we're going to see what God does. Like I said, in April, we're going to be in the gymnasium uh, capacity 550. If we start uh, pressuring this capacity, uh, we may go down the hall to the uh, 160 capacity. Uh, in two weeks or something. <laughs> and and uh, I want to thank uh, our singer and musician uh, for leading us into the presence of God. And uh, they literally moved down uh, this past summer. They planned on moving down from Cali uh, to Florida and uh, they wound up planning on being here December 21st and, and uh, they didn't know why they were coming to Florida that God was just leading them and then found out that I was planning a church here and they were like that's it that's why God wants us there and uh, if they weren't singing, I would have to sing. <laughs> and uh, you do not want that. You do not want that. I will scare you. Uh, I tried to sing Amazing Grace in a church service one time. And got so nervous, I started forgetting the words. And, uh, I quenched the spirit. Quenched the spirit. Um, I was telling somebody, I was joking with somebody, I tried to sing another time because I thought maybe it was the crowd. They weren't ready for that type of gifted singing. And I tried to uh, sing again at another church and the altar call because I was like, hey, that's a safe place to sing. The altar call, people are crying, you know, people are praying, they won't hear me. And I started, started singing. I was like, pray again to Jesus. I'm telling you, somebody's tear rolled back up into the <laughs> I quenched the spirit. People, like people started getting confused. They're like, what's going on here? So I retired my music career. And I'm not going to let Orlando bring it out. Amen. Amen. Uh, why don't we open up our Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. I want to say I honor all of you for being here today. What a hunger that I feel here. And uh, God's doing something special. Uh, honor to my my wife and my son. And uh, all those that helped set up and break down. So thankful for uh, the London family as well. Uh, so many people have been helping out. Um, we're just going to get this thing, get this thing started. I talked about doing some training and doing some teaching for those uh, aspiring to volunteer in what we're doing. We're going to be kicking that off in February. I was wanting to hold it till March, but y'all too hungry. Amen. I was wanting to hold off till March to start doing some training, but there's so many hungry people here. Uh, we're going to get that started this month. Okay. 
uh, most likely the second week of uh, February, uh, not this week, but the following week, uh, we're going to start having some uh, time of training and for those that would like to volunteer. Uh, isn't that exciting? Amen. Amen. Second Kings chapter 4 and verse 1. Second Kings chapter 4 and verse 1. You can visualize it on the screen. <laughs> now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Everyone say, Some oil. Some oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Verse 7, last scripture. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. I want to preach about this woman, this incredible woman, this widow. And I want to talk about her situation, and I want to preach on this subject uh, this afternoon, a blessing for the overwhelmed. A blessing for the overwhelmed. Why don't you lay your Bibles down, everyone close your eyes, lift up your hands, and let's ask God to speak in this place. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your anointing. Lord, I thank you for your spirit. Lord, let the power of God move in a mighty way. Let there be a demonstration of your power and of your anointing. Open the doors that no man can shut. Move as only you can move. Heal as only you can heal. Touch as only you can touch. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you clap your hands to the Lord? Come on, can you clap your hands a little bit louder? Come on, your expectation, can you clap those hands a little bit louder? of the Lord. Somebody shout yes. yes. A blessing for the overwhelmed. Don't worry about the, the sound. If I need to, I'll preach without, without the mic. Because i got to get this message across to you somehow. A blessing for the overwhelmed. I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life where I have been overwhelmed by life. Has anyone ever been there? If it's not one thing, it's the other thing. 
And many times the other thing is more stressful than the thing that you're dealing with. Many times when life comes, life comes at you fast. Does it give you time to catch up? Does it give you time to catch your breath? It just keeps on coming. And it can be overwhelming. And it's like you become submerged in life. Where it's like six weeks pass and you don't even realize it passed. A week passed and, you, and you, you, you're saying, hey, is it January 1st? You're like, whoa, it's like the 20th. I don't even know it. The 30th? 30th. See, I can't even believe it. <laughs> but life just comes so quick. It can just be overwhelming at times. And there's been times in my life that I can remember praying prayers, expecting God to make a way for me. Make a way for a situation I'm praying about, only to walk away Still feeling the coldness of a dead body in my hands because a, a child died in my hands. Broken dreams, broken situations, broken lives, broken things, broken things that come into your world that overwhelms you, that submerges you and you feel defeated because of it. And you think, can there be any beauty that comes out of this overwhelming moment? Will it ever be over? And I know that we put time limits on, on good times, but we never put time limits on bad times. When things go good, we wonder, is somebody about to hurt me? I want somebody. Somebody say they love you. You say, what you want from me? Because uh, you're still bleeding, and yes, you've got the suit on, yes, you got the clothes on, but, but blood is still seeping through through that suit and those clothes because you're still trying to survive the last trial. Yeah. Let me get through the last trial before the other trial comes. But it seems like it keeps piling on. And this woman, she is dealing with such a situation for she, she, her, her husband dies. Her husband is a faithful man. He's not just faithful, but he is a, a man of God. He is a son of the prophets. He is a man that has a walk with God. And now he is gone. This is a faithful family. This family, they had a prayer life. She prayed, yet trouble still came. She was faithful to God yet trouble still came. She had a walk with God yet trouble still came. She was faithful with her giving. She had a good attitude yet trouble still came. Can I preach to somebody in this building? Nothing can disqualify you from trouble. Nothing can disqualify you from a storm. A storm may come but it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or something wrong with your faith. You've got to learn to hold on to God in the middle of the midnight hour. And God's going to bring you out of that situation. Uh, the presence of a storm does not mean the absence of God. Jesus' presence does not guarantee that a storm won't come. But it does guarantee you'll make it through. She's faithful. She's a worshiper. Don't believe the doctrine that if you worship, you won't go through nothing. Huh. That's, it. That's it. That's it. There's a lot of discouraged believers that they worshiped and shouted like they never shouted yet just to walk in on a Monday morning and get fired. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm preaching in this place right now. Overwhelmed overwhelmed with life. She is overwhelmed. She loses her husband. She loses her, her money and she is a victim to the decadence of society because when a widow, and when there's a widow the society was supposed to take care of that widow. They were supposed to leave parts of the land for her and her family to eat off of. 
But the, but the society is so backslid that they do not care for the oppressed. They do not care for the broken and the hurting. They are left to fend for themselves. And now it gets to the point where she's so overwhelmed where all she can do is just talk about the problem. Have you ever been there? That's all they could be like, God bless you. You're like, let me tell you what happened. Yeah. 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 Somebody come and give you a blessing. Hey, I got a blessing. Yeah, thank you. Let me tell you what happened. They're like, happy birthday. Hey, thank you. It's the fifth year since this happened. It's true. Come on, somebody. Happy, happy birthday. You're, you're 50. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you what happened at 45. She is left just talking about the problem. And you can talk about the problem where the problem just becomes your identity. You can talk about the problem so much that it just becomes who you are. You become identified by your problem. Blind Bartimaeus, he, he's still healed. He's healed, but they still call him Blind Bartimaeus. Blind so long, I don't care that you see. You blind to me. <laughs> with the issue of blood, the issue's over, but they still call her the woman with the issue of blood. Still, They still settle, define her by her issue. And this woman, this woman, this widow, she is talking about the problem so much, and you can talk about the problem so much, but it doesn't change the problem. She's so overwhelmed with the problem, it's just the talking point of every story, of every person that she comes into contact with, she keeps on talking about the problem. She wakes up with the problem on her mind, goes to sleep with the problem on her mind. Anybody ever been there? She wrote about the problem. She journaled about the problem. Come on, somebody. Left social media hints about the problem. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It's all about the problem. And the more she talks about it, there's no conclusion that's coming. Finally, she tells the prophet, she cries out to him, and she rehearses the problem like she's done to everybody else, but nobody could help her. You ever been through something so bad that you try to tell people about it and they don't want to hear it? They, they start hanging up the phone on you. They're like, hello, man. No, no, I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Talking about the problem so much and the prophet finally tells her. She says, she says hey, the creditor has come. And here's the issue. It's not just a problem that my husband's gone. Not just a problem that I'm a widow. Not just a problem that I'm poor. But look what she says. She said, they're going to take away my kids. Uh, there's nothing like a problem that doesn't just affect you. But it starts affecting your family. And when it starts affecting your family, there's a desperation that begins to get in your heart. You see, you can play it real cool when it's just your problem. How you doing? Hey, guys, I'm blessed. Praise the Lord. You can pull it off. But when hell starts messing with the kids, that's right. you start twitching. That's right. Because now it's getting on a side of you that they don't want to see. So my sons are in, it's not just me that's in trouble, it's the next generation that's in trouble with what I'm dealing with. The prophet said, what shall I do for thee? And he said, tell me what's in your house. And she's looking at him like, is this a joke? I ain't got nothing in this house. 
I don't even have furniture in this house. Come on. Rena Center came back and took it from me. Come on. <laughs> I borrowed it. They broke the door down and came and took it from me. I got nothing in here. Save a pot of oil. And you know what the prophet said? That's all that you need. All that you need is to take a break from the problem and grab the oil. Mm. Oh, Lord in heaven. See, you're not going to talk yourself out of this problem. You're not going to connect your way out of this problem. The only way you're going to get out of this problem is to grab the oil. And when you grab the oil, the oil has the answer that you need uh, to come out of it better than you went in. Uh, when you grab the oil, the oil has the answer that you need to come out of your situation shouting, to come out of your situation dancing, to come out of your situation praying. Okay, you clap your hands one more time for the Lord. He said, it's just time for you to take a break from the problem and just grab the oil because you can get so overwhelmed. But that overwhelming tendency is to push you closer to the oil. Anytime you feel overwhelmed, it's to push you closer to the anointing oil. It's to push you closer to the presence of God. And nobody else has your answer. But if you can just get one moment in the presence of God, God's presence can solve more than 10,000 years of counseling. It can solve more than... 10,000 years of medication. Come on, somebody. If you can just get in the presence of God, He can do more for you than anything else can do for you. He, he said, take a break from the problem and grab the oil. The oil, it is synonymous with the anointing oil. The oil, it is synonymous with the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And can I tell you, we can get everything together like we have today. We got the monitor, we got the keyboard. Our first service, we just had a guitar. We got we got the speakers, we got this and that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you know what? None of it matters if we don't get the presence of God to come in this place. None of it matters if we don't get God to come down. And I come to preach to you in your spirit and your family. Take a break from the problem and throw your hands in the air and go ahead and get a bottle of oil and let the oil come down and wash over. It'll take care of your depression. It'll take care of your anxiety. It'll take care of your fears. It'll take care of your worries. Just get a touch of the oil. It can take care of every issue. Come on, that's it. Pop again. Come on, that's it. Pop again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you got to take a break huh, and look at what's in your house. Huh. See, some of us have begun to take for granted the presence of God huh, because the oil is in the house so long. Huh, we don't recognize its value anymore huh, because the oil is so accessible now. Huh, we don't recognize its value anymore. Do you understand what it took to get in the presence of God in the Old Testament? Huh, they had to go and find a goat. Huh, they had to go and find a lamb. They had to go and kill that lamb. They had to bring it to the altar. They had to set it on fire. They had to extract blood from it. Come on, that was messy. It had to do all of this stuff just to get in the presence of God. They had to go to a brazen labor and clean themselves. They had to go beyond the pillars into the holy place. They had to do ministry at the table of shoe bread. They had to do ministry at the altar of incense. They had to do
do ministry at the seven golden candlesticks. And once a year, they got to get into the presence of God and the holiest of holies. And if that priest wasn't right with God, the presence of God would come down and destroy them. They had to get right before they did the ministry on the mercy seat. But now, after what Jesus did at Calvary, the veil is rent from top to bottom. And everybody has access into the presence of God. You don't have to bring an animal to get into his presence. You just got to bring your worship. You don't have to bring an animal to get in his presence. You just got to bring your praise. You just got to bring your prayer. And as soon as you open up your mouth, there will be an anointing that comes down from heaven that begins to destroy every yoke. The yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. have to strain to enter into the presence of God. The word is nigh thee even in your mouth. Anytime you want God to come down, all you got to do is open your mouth. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to put yourself on a probation period. You don't have to be faithful for six months before God says that he loves you. All you've got to do is say, God, I need you now. And all of a sudden, the oil will come down. The presence of God will come down. Nothing else, nothing else will solve your problems but the oil. That's what you need. You say, well, if this person will just do this, and if that person will just do that, and if my finances just do this, and if the house does this, no, no, that's not the priority. The priority is that I've got to get the oil in my life. I've got to put my attention back on the oil. And that's what happened when she was overwhelmed. When she was overwhelmed, this is the blessing of the overwhelmed. When she was overwhelmed, it directed her attention back on the oil. Oh God, sometimes you got to get overwhelmed in life for you to find the oil all over again. Oh, for you to get a touch of him all over again. David said in Psalm 61 too. He said, well, my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He said, look, when my heart gets weary by life. Uh, come on, somebody. When your heart gets faint because of life. Oh, Lord. When your heart gets overwhelmed, weak, because of being submerged and overridden by life. He said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He said, when my, it's, he said, I don't go to the rock until my heart's overwhelmed. If, if, if I feel like everything's fine, I don't really look for the rock. Yeah. Come, on, yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. When everything when everything's settled in my world, I, I start thinking my circumstances are the rock. All right. Yeah. Like it's gonna last forever. Come on, somebody. But he said, when my heart's overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. When I get overwhelmed, it leads you. That word lead, it means to guide. When you get overwhelmed, your overwhelming circumstance will guide you. Take you by the hand. To the rock. This is how you're going to overcome. This is how you're going to get through it. This is how you're going to survive. This is how it's, you're gonna, the doors is going to open. This is how you're going to make it through. It's when you come to the rock. That rock, he was speaking of it being a shelter. He was speaking of it being a fortress against enemies. He said, when life is overwhelming me, just lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When I get over when I get overwhelmed, 
that overwhelming circumstance is leading me to the source. It's leading me back to the rock. God. How many of you know we have a tendency to drift? Yes. Yes. We start drifting. <laughs> but, but when we get overwhelmed, that when you get overwhelmed, oh, overwhelming has a purpose to guide you back to the rock. To guide you back to the oil. I got the same answer for every one of you here. Come back to the rock. That rock is Christ. He's the rock of our salvation. But but Brother Jackson, if if we could just... uh, just come back to the rock. Right. Brother Jackson, but if, if I just did this and I just navigated this, just just come back to the rock. Huh? Come back to the oil. Huh? And God is going to work everything out. When you get overwhelmed, it's a sign you need another visit. With the rock. Come on somebody. When you get overwhelmed. It's a sign you got to make a trip back. To grab some oil. That's what they told the prophet. Hey the journey's too great for you. Eat something. Eat, Eat the bread of life. Get some manna from heaven. Come back into the supernatural when your heart gets overwhelmed. Can you lift up your hands for a moment? I just feel the Holy Ghost doing. I feel conviction in this place. I feel conviction in this place. I feel hunger in this place. I feel light bulbs going off. I'm just going to go back to the rock when I'm overwhelmed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know what David said? He said, um, before I was afflicted, I went astray. And then he says this, Lord, in your faithfulness, you afflicted me. Did you hear what I just said? He said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. He said, in your faithfulness, you afflicted me. God knows how to use pain to get us back on track. He knows how to use pain to get us back to our purpose. He knows how to use pain to, it's it's almost like when everything's going good, we get sloppy. But all of a sudden, when when that pain hits, it's true. Come on, somebody. We like to come on. Okay, Lord. I'm a soldier. You're marching. Yeah. My God, you sure you want me to go there? I'll turn here. I'll stop. There's a dependency that comes when you're overwhelmed. Yeah. When you admit, I can't, I can't do this on my own anymore. I need the oil to get through this. Uh, I need the rock to help me through this right now. I need help from another world. I don't have the talent. I don't have the ability. I don't have the intellectual capacity to navigate this storm. I need something from heaven. (laughs) The Bible says that our light affliction. Wave a hand if I'm helping somebody. The, the, The Bible says that our light affliction which is but for a moment. What does it say? It says, work it for us. 
a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Did you hear what the text said? It said, your light affliction worketh for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Your, your affliction isn't working against you. It's working for you. Your pain isn't against you. It's for you. It's guiding you to dependency. It's guiding you to a strength in God. It's guiding you to a level in God that you could not get unless you first encounter being overwhelmed. There's some places in God you can't see until you're overwhelmed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's when you discover that, that he's the rock. When, when we overwhelm, when you get overwhelmed, overcome, submerged, God is trying to direct your attention back to what really matters. Because there's always going to be, you know what this widow showed us? That life is unfair. Because they were supposed to take care of her. Society was unfair. And she could have stayed in that dismal place. But oil, nothing extra was coming to save her. Until, she, until the prophet just said, hey, just, just grab the oil. Just, 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 just grab the oil. Don't, don't, don't that aggravate you when God does that to you? Like, God, okay, just grab the oil. <laughs> but, 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 just, 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 just grab the oil. Just say you need me. Hold on, let me tell you my problem first. <laughs> that's, real, that's that real preaching right there, huh? Let me tell you, God's like, just tell me you need me. Yeah. But, but God, I, I, I've been doing, I, that's the problem. You have been doing too much. <laughs> You've been doing so much, your heart's getting weary. You're getting tired of loving. Tired of trusting. Tired of believing in people. Come on, somebody. Because of what life has done to you and what you're trying to do to navigate life. Just come to me. I'm asking you to let God be your rock. I'm asking you to let the Spirit of God come in and begin to wash things and heal things in your heart. There was a servant that was overwhelmed because there was a big army around, around them to destroy them. And he's worried, and he's afraid, and he's overwhelmed. But the prophet tells him, he just prays over him and says, Lord, open his eyes. That he might see that they that be with us are more than they that be with him. And all of a sudden, that servant's eyes were opened. And he saw a host of angels that outnumbered the enemies that were against him. But it wasn't until he was overwhelmed that he got a vision. It wasn't until he was overwhelmed that his eyes were open. And you're looking at your situation right now and all you see 
is you and your family against a whole host of enemies. A whole host of problems. And you take them on the mentality because when you, you get hurt and you just get beat up, you take on the mentality, it's like, hey, I don't care we're outnumbered. We're going to do something. Yep, yep. Get my, get my pepper spray. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, where my shoe at? <laughs> and, and, and even if you don't know how to fight, you got to act like you know how to fight. Yeah. Ain't got no fighting stance at all. You just make up something. <laughs> God, God looking at you like, come on now. Right. <laughs> and God looking at you like, hey, now you know you got like a big heart and you know you can't fight. God's like, let me handle this. But you got to pretend because, you know, when, when stuff keeps coming against you, don't you hate feeling vulnerable? Yes. Yes. You're almost like, I could, I could do something. You know? I, I, can make a, I, I can make a good comeback. I got some smart remarks in me. <laughs> all, all day you're thinking about a, a good smart remark to give back. You're typing them out on your notepad. <laughs> When, if he say this, I'm going to say this. And if she say that, I'm going to say this. And, this. and you got a whole list of things that never will happen. Yeah. Right. Yes. It'll never happen. And God's saying, you know what? Instead of allowing overwhelming to push you into yourself, allow it to push you into me. And I will take care of the things that have been coming against you. Amen. And I'm telling you, God is so sovereign. Whatever has been overwhelming you, God will use it to overcome your enemy. This week, and I know uh, none of you have talked with me about anything. I haven't had any counseling with anybody this week or got a chance to be at the reeds with, with the funeral of Keisha this Thursday. Other than that, I don't know anything, anything. That's, that's been going on in your world. But I do know by the Holy Ghost yes. that you have been overwhelmed. And your heart's been weary. And your heart's been tired. And your heart's been weak. And the Holy Ghost is saying, it's time to come back to the rock. It's time to come back to the oil because one moment in his presence can wipe away years of hurt. I, I, I remember, I remember. I remember growing up and going, going through different things that are tough for a child to endure. The first 11 years of my life, I I was abused in every way that you can imagine. They would lock me in closets. Or the family would go out to 
go out to eat, I'd be stuck in the closet. I spent so much time in that closet that they would bring toys and games in the closet and close it and go on about their business. The abuse was so bad I couldn't speak a word of English intelligibly until I was five years old. My mom had to send me to a speech therapist for a year to teach me how to talk. The abuse was so bad. Suffered so much rejection and trauma. I didn't know where to go to be healed. Because everyone I trusted just would turn their backs and walk away from me. And I put my heart and something temporary. I put my heart in, in basketball and I would play basketball and I played collegiate for two years and I had scholarship offers all across the country. And, but even with all the accolades and the pets on the back and all of that, I was empty and I was over. And I said, God, am I ever going to be healed of this? And then there came a moment in his presence. After I received his spirit and was coming into the house of God, coming faithfully. I'll never forget lifting up my hands after holding in years of tears because I was unable to cry, I was so hardened. Lifting up my hands in his presence. And in a single moment, he washed it all away. I can never With the things that overwhelmed me when my first 18 years of life. Perhaps it's the reason why I stay as a child in his presence. I just stay dependent. I don't ever want to be so strong that I don't need God. I don't want to have so much together that I factor God out of the equation. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how successful I've been in my life, I make sure I go back to that rock because it's that rock that kept me. It's that rock that saved me. It's that rock that still keeps me. Yeah. And I'm telling you, that rock is still keeping me. And I know that I'll, I'll never be defeated, that I'll never fall to the wayside because uh, the rock is holding my hand and I've got the oil in one hand, I've got the rock in the other hand. I'm, I'm walking with God and I'm trusting in God and I'm asking you that if you want to live an undefeated life, that no matter what tries to wear you down or wear your hearts down, if you will just make sure every time you don't go to people first, you don't go to media first, you go to the rock first, you go to the oil first. He's going to heal you. He's going to make you whole. He's going to wash over you. Everybody stand with me. I know every service has been has been different, but I feel like God is meeting unique needs. Every service. Some of you have been abused. Some of you were molested. Some of you were rejected. Some of you never knew your dad, never knew your mom. Some of you have been walking in rejection and contention and in brokenness and feeling abandoned. And I'm trying to tell you that a moment in his presence 
a moment with the rock. Just you and him focused on him alone. They can do more for you than 10,000 sermons. If you can just cleave to that rock. If you can just direct your attention back to the oil. I know it's been unfair. But the oil is your answer. The rock's your answer. I want you to close your eyes right now. I want you to lay your hands on somebody near you right now. And I want you to pray for them and I want you to tell them it's time to come back to the rock. Come on, tell them you've been running from the rock. I know it's painful. I know you don't want to be rejected. I know you don't want to go through what you're going through, but just come back to the rock. Come on, that's it. Come back to the rock. Come back to the rock. Come back to the oil. You've been overwhelmed, but it's leading you to the rock. You've been overwhelmed, but it's leading you to the oil. I feel the presence of God here. I feel the presence of God washing over somebody here. Come on, that's it. Open up your mouth. And just come back to the rock. Externally, but I feel healing happening internally right now. Come on, begin to speak life over them. That's it. Open up your mouth. Begin to speak life over them. Come on, I'm coming back to the rock. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the oil. Because he's the only one that can help me. He's the only one that can heal me. He's the only one that can make me whole. He's the only one that can open the doors that no man can shut. Come on, 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 come on,